Hey everybody, welcome back to the Banner Saga. So, in the last episode, we as the, the big Varl giant guys teamed up with Eirik, or Eirik, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'll, I'll try and work it out as we go along. Um, and we um, basically had a bar fight with some bad guys and we beat them all up and I think we should just resume the game and um, kind of take it from where it left off. So, um, so yeah, so we, we basically went into, where was it, the, the nobleman, which was like the bar over here, and some stuff happened. We were told that we had to go down to the docks to, uh, to like, intercept the, the longship that were coming in. Um, I think that was like a royal, like, entourage type effort coming in to, to visit up north, up the top house bit here. So we'll go over to the docks and see what's going down. So, Uben Fognir. A familiar bowel steps into the docks. In your mind you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Gothheim or Grofheim. So Grofheim's like the Varl capital or like their area, their country maybe, or their like city. Um and he's saying he was abundant in purpose. <laughs> God Zubin, you're looking ancient. Comes with being old, and if there is Vognir, there must be Hakon or Hakon or Hakon. I think Hakon. Haken. The name pronunciation, I'm just going to kind of just make up my own pronunciation for it and kind of roll with that for, <laughs> for the playthrough. So, Hacken um, Muster, even though he's actually there, yes. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yorks. At what age did you lose your sense of shame? Jurunder demands it. I think Jurunder might be like the king or the emperor. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of... I had no sense that you were far from home. Just returned for... Uh, just returned from Arborang? Arborang, in fact. And glad for it. So Hakon motions to the other ship still in the bay, sail uh, still fluttering. Golden wolf head emblem... Emblazoned? Emblazoned? <laughs> emblazoned in red. The king of men or someone on his behalf. The king's whelp. So basically, like, the prince. The king's son, Ludin. Don't you know Scrivener? Scrivener? Some of these words, that, like, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest, some of these words I was reading and I was like, I have no idea what that word is and I should probably look it up, but I never did. So that's Scrivener? Don't you know Scrivener? I think he's calling me Scrivener, I don't know why. We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. Fair enough. Diplomatic missions and all that kind of shit. It's a miserable waste of time. I suppose it would be. Yes, Hacken has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hacken. I think he's been sarcastic there. I think he's been that. He's like saying, oh, I'd almost forgotten that it was a horrible job. Then you're going to Grofheim. I have a distinct feeling I've finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. Now, for anyone that's not aware, like when they refer to caravan, they don't mean like a... Like a place where gypsies might live. They mean, like, a large congregation of people that would travel together. And they call it, like, a caravan. And Vognir says, We should give it a day. In better circumstances, a drink a week away, but, uh, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. <laughs> what he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Which is true, he's a bit of an arsehole. Where is Mogger? Mogger! Uh, see, with a Scottish accent, it's difficult to pronounce these things when they've... They're, they're, like, that, that should have a letter in there, surely. There should be a vowel between the G and the R. It makes no sense. Mojir. <laughs> Mojir. <laughs> uh, we'll just call him Mogger from now on. Um, hack on. I've, um, I haven't found a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading to meet the governor. Cool. A host of giants departs in your wake. You recognise a few others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogger. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. So the young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes his tunic, um, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the... Eh? Ludin looks for all the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Very good. Jolly good. So I think this is when we kind of get, like, the kind of choicey stuff where we can do more things, we can kind of investigate what's going on. So, we're in a study uh, suddenly settles in, you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it's been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. 
On the other hand, if you're going to join Vognir's caravan uh, tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hacken or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. So we can um, we can do a number of things. So what I done in my original playthrough is I went to these things, but I could go up to the Great Hall and just see, see what's going on up there and get a nice comfy bed. I don't know if I can go anywhere else. There should be a market. Ah, music. How nice. Um, yeah, so the music plays periodically. It doesn't play like the right way, right the way through, which I think adds to the atmosphere rather than detracts from it. I've heard a few people say they would rather the music played like consistently through and that they would prefer to hear like more variety. I like the way the music's been implemented and I like the, the range of music. It's very befitting of the, the overall feeling of just ice and snow and cold and I enjoy it very much. So, our choices that we have... We can either go to the Great Hall and speak to the the governor, the governator, Arnie, up there somewhere, or we can go to um, Hakon and then speak to Luden. Um, I want to go up to the Great Hall, but at the same time I should probably go and speak to my man, my main man. So he seems quite excited to see us. Scrivener, 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 I think it's Scrivener, I think we should say, <laughs> Scrivener! You find Hacken in a mead house surrounded by other Varl. Strand is no stranger to Varl, um, but rarely sees this many. Hacken waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Hmm. You big alky, you Hacken, you you rascal. Faulkner's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. Fair enough. This guy's kind of like a like a. Well, he's like a kind of high up soldier. I would imagine he's more of a kind of. I'm here for protection type deal. So you already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me the trouble. Which is fair enough. Uh, I can understand that. No surprise what was <laughs> what this time. When, uh, when I got here the Great Hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Hard man. Ubin. Old but hard as nails. He just likes a fight. He's up for it. Ha. Humans. Ha ha, humans, you rascals. Um, <laughs> I guess if you've lived long enough... <laughs> I guess if you've lived as long as a yox far... What the fuck is a yox? Do they mean ox or yak? Or is it a combination of the two? Is this what happens when you get like an ox and a yak in a room? Nine months later, a yox fart happens. <laughs> I might be desperate to make something of myself too. Which is fair enough, if you get old, you kind of want to make some... Some honest, well, I suppose collecting tax wouldn't be really my judgment of an honest living, but there you go. So it's not too late for you to start trying hacking or haking or hack on. <laughs> yeah, he slips a low chuckle. Any barrel could recount his deeds. Uh, known known as he is for cutting a way through the dredge at Wagner's side in the Second War and regularly since then. So the the dredge we will encounter soon. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes unbearing, uh, overbearing, sorry, and uh, then you step into the cool air outside. That's a good feeling that when you've had too many shandies and you sh you step outside and it's all nice and cold and you feel like, oh, it's, it's a good day. Um, now, they're going to speak to this little whelp. Prince boy. So, is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed varl who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. So, greetings, Prince Luden. Yes, you're with Vogdir. I don't remember you. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a bit of a ball bag, as we will say. Um, not exactly. I've known Vogdir for a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grofheim with my guards. Uh, I've changed the pronunciation of this place like five times already. I do apologise, but I'm just going to continue with my... I just like to freestyle it. I'll just say whatever I feel. So Lyndon looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. Now, I don't know if he's been serious with that or whether he's been sarcastic, because it could be either way. I think he might be kind of sarcastic because nobody likes tax collectors bunch of rotters so what do you want um so we can say just to introduce myself i hope to learn more about you 
I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might to talk about your visit. Um, I'll see what the the bottom one says. We'll do that one. A viral historian, aha. Don't you already know your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting in throughout the city? Eh? Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting it throughout the cities. What? I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Luden takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ingracious, you aren't certain. Maybe both. A formality, mostly. Fognir came to the capital in um, Aberang, and now we go to the Varl capital in Grofheim to cement this grand alliance for the next age of men in Varl. You sound unconvinced. You do, actually. I say, I'm unconvinced. I'm not convinced either. There's no need for it. And it's damn cold up here. This is true. You get the sense that he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. So that played out kind of differently to my other one. Mostly the same reaction, though. The, the, the other game that I played through, I just said I was looking to just introduce myself, and he was similarly as cold and kind of arsey. So maybe that's just the kind of guy he is, but that'll probably reflect on a future choice, maybe, or a future thing that happens. So we've kind of explored both situations, and I think we just go up to the Great Hall now and just have a slumber. I don't you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with the sun that never moves. Uh, the governor's crest adorns the supply leathers. All there, just as promised. To your mild surprise. Well, well fair enough. You wonder if Eirik, or... Yeah, I suppose it would be Eirik, because the I comes after the E. Eirik had anything to do with that. Yeah, maybe he did. He sounds like a good guy. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vognir is already here. And um, a while later, Luden and his men appear groggy and dishevelled. And we got 20 renown for that situation there. So, Mogar <laughs> steps forward. Vognir's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy, uh, unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. Um, well, we can't really do anything, I don't think. Yeah, we're ready. Let's go. You follow Mogar and enjoy, uh, join the others. Usually the smaller doors set in the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under the breath that are best not heard. I wonder why. Why? No, probably just arsey that they have to be working. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarises Strand well as, uh, as a whole, you think. Fair do so. Nice. Okay, so we can actually start doing some things. We're on the road. We'll be doing some some stuff. So we're now, like, kind of doing things we can, like, select to... Usually we can select to stop. Can we not? Or maybe that's not come yet. Maybe I have to travel for over a day first. Yeah, I mean, we've got all our stuff here. I cannot... Yeah, it's just basically not letting me do anything. So we can, we can kind of select this away and uh, back again. Usually it will allow you to actually stop and set up camp where you can like do things like train or level up your heroes and stuff. So the caravan stops for the day. A gift says Mogar cracking open um, mead casks from our gracious friend, the governor of Strand. Hours pass with uh, ru is that ruckus? I think that's ruckus. Ruckus laughter as the mead is passed throughout. Um, drink, uh, drink a little. You go easy, you've got nothing against a good drink, but if anyone's going to keep an eye on things, it might as well be you. The revelers eventually fall asleep without incident. Nice. Easy enough. So, uh, here's here's like the, the, the kind of main caravan setup where you've got camp. So, you rise grog uh, groggily. The campsite of <laughs> the campsite's a casualty of merriment. Mogger is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Luden stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up. You nudge Fognir, you're needed. Because the old princey boy's coming to give you a finger in the face and say, Oh, you've been bad. Ah, it's Luden, always a pleasure. You look well rested. Fognir releases a cage, John, and receives a hard eyed stare in return. This guy's a bit of a ball bag, if we're being honest. How long to grow fine? Ha, we're only two days out of strand, you know. Come, I'll show you the map. So we can view the map ourselves. 
momentarily. The map's pretty awesome. Like, I like looking at the map just to see where everything is. So, world map. So you can basically click and drag, look around the X and things and stuff. So we are here, of course. We've just left Strand. Where is it? Strand's here. So we've left there. We've walked all the way over here. But there's lots of shit going on. Like, look at the size of the... Who's this? Dunder's beard. Who's Dunder? He's, I guess that's because it looks like a beard. It looks like Africa. Um, there's like lots of shit going on. I, I enjoy it very much. It reminds me of like the Lord of the Rings map. Uh, I'm I'm fascinated by like early maps and things like that as well, like the way people like plotted out lands and things. But I like the way that this is constructed. It looks like the map that's actually in the Lord of the Rings book. The way that it's kind of all pen on on kind of worn paper and stuff. It looks awesome. I don't know what the fuck this is? <laughs> the cardinal directions. Okay, so that's like a compass basically. What are the cardinal directions? What the fuck? Okay, fair enough. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so we basically can look around here, it shows us the stuff. We click the X to leave, and it should allow us to do some more stuff. So we had north, then east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from strand, going to be a long march. Fair enough. You should have a dra you should have drank last night, Luden. Yeah, lighten up, you wee gobshite. <laughs> Why not take the ships to Skrimmishted? Screamerstead. Screamerstead? Screamerstead. Ah, <laughs> oh, suck at this. Screamerstead. We'll call it from now on. We'll call it Big S. What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called up for a reason. It's still covered in ice all year. Um, and it would tear up the long ships, which is fair enough. Too bad, though. We could have shown you the wonders of Screamerstead. A half-sunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Talking to him like a kid, that's quite funny. And <laughs> Luden exhales through his nose, a poor disguise of his contempt. He turns bats aside uh, the tent flaps and goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the anthill, Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. <laughs> I love how, like, Ubin's just a, a sensible old guy, just like, stop causing trouble, stop being a dick. Spend a few more days with that boy, old friend. You'll be looking up. <laughs> You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off of too. Fair enough. Luden's got a shorter wick than Hacking. This guy here. Thanks, Vognir. Let's get moving. Another half day to Vederfell, if we're lucky. So this should actually give us the option to. Ah, okay. So camp. We've got our camp here. I don't need to read it. Oh, okay. So you can pass the time by resting things, stuff. I'll show you the stuff. So, we're at the, the camp screen, so we can do rest. If we rest, it passes a day. Um, it's looking for us to actually click on the heroes tent. You can do training. So we'll go to heroes, and it will actually show you where we can actually view our guys, and we can set our... Let's have a look here. So I think it's just wanting us to promote people, so I'll pick on Gunolf, you big rascal. So this shows you what like all their abilities are and what they can do. So Gunolf, being the Warhawk, he has this thing called Tempest, which is like a almost like an AoE type attack where you can attack two um, or you rank him up and get three or four enemies at the same time. Um, he's also got heavy impact. How's that? How does the heavy impact work then? Ah, uh, okay, so. So I think it just means that when he's doing things that it just kind of like affects the, the characters to the side as well. He's a gnarly looking dude though. He looks mean as F. So we can promote, and that'll basically level up the characters, and I think um, promotion for the first time is like 5 renown, then it goes up to 10, I think, maybe, or 15. But we'll do that there, we'll level him up, and we can add 2 points to any of this stuff here. So, um, if we click the question mark, it'll show you what these individual bits are. So the top here is his ability, so is the unique power that the class wields. Um, you can click on the icon for more information about what that is. So. Adding points to armor um, will basically be like. Wait, what was it talking about? Your strength, their armor equals damage. I don't know if that's relative to this, but yeah, armor blocks damage. So basically, if you've got more armor than their attack, it's it, it's kind of good. It will deflect their kind of hits and stuff. 
Strength is both damage and health. If your strength falls to zero, you'll fall unconscious. Willpower is the, the kind of one that I've been interested in the most because it allows you to do things bit better. Like, so it doesn't replenish over time or over a fight, but if you've got more of it, then you can use more. And exertion is the amount of willpower that can be used at any given time. What was the bottom one again? Break is the amount of direct damage you can do naturally to an enemy's armor. Yes. Add some to break and probably add some to shield as well or armor. Um, that way we'll be extra specially strong. Who else can we level up? Just... Just gone off, is that, is that the only one we can think me? So, this now sets our turn order as well, so... I really don't want him to be a part of our fucking party. Because he's just, he's just a little guy, he's not doing much. But these guys are all pretty solid. Um, yeah, I'd say that's fine. So that's kind of like the, the basics of it. Once you start buying things like items, you can equip items to the individual people. And you can go training as well. And in training, you can test, like, strategy and stuff. I've not been taxed to the point where I've needed strategy yet. I've not really felt like I needed it, but... In the training tent, I'll just show you what kind of stuff you can do. So, pop you over here, and then we, we train against these fuckers. So, if I just go ready... Battle! So, we'll just come over here and stand and just wait. So, our shield banger down here. So, I can just come over here and bash you nice and good. So our choices here would be to remove two armor or to remove two health. Um, we could actually remove four health so we could probably kill him in two hits. Now he'll only do three damage to us and we've got nine armor so don't really see that as being much of a threat and there's the big guy there just enjoying himself. Um, we'll just come over here and stand. Nice. I'm just checking that you, so you get willpower plus two for having great morale. The morale's important, I guess. It's something that you should keep. Look, look at this. Just one hit and you're dead. He's just such a powerhouse. Wait, what are you doing, young man? There we go. Wait, what? Why? Why can I not do any damage? That's kind of weird. Resist. Resist what? Has he got some kind of special effect on? Hmm. Interesting. We'll end your turn. Come over here. Not really sure why he's got resist. Or maybe it's because we're practicing like it just won't end. Ah, who cares? Anyway, that's just like one of those things that we can... We can do, we can do training. I can end this, hopefully. Nice. And we can continue our quest onwards.